Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, please uh, get yourself comfortable. We'll, uh, we'll wait for a few more before we begin. And uh, to make this session interesting, we, we know that uh, we all miss traveling. So uh, what we can do to make it a bit more fun is, is we can change our names. Now, so if you can go to your uh, thumbnail, my three buttons, Jan, you can rename yourself. Okay, and uh, the, now we miss traveling. What I did is I renamed myself as the nearest airport to Akin, which is MNL, since I live here in Manila, and then my name. Okay, so MNL and then my name. So you can look at my my uh, name and then you can just copy that. Depending kung ano yung nearest airport uh, where you currently are. Kasi nga, we really miss traveling, we miss going outdoors, we, we miss visiting our loved ones. Ang fun dito is later we can see where people are dialing in from. So I'm here in Manila. Uh, there might be people, uh, there might be participants here who, who are dialing from Bacolod, Cebu. In our last session, someone dialed in from Sweden. Okay, so it would be a fun thing to see. Okay, so please do that and then let's have fun. We'll start in a few minutes. So let's just let's just wait for the others to log. Okay. If you want to be a change maker, it's super important that you're someone who's in integrity. You feel complete in yourself and you show up in your full self. You show up with radical honesty. So you own everything that you can own and when you have that level of integrity around you, then you can actually gain the trust of the system that you're in, that you're trying to influence to actually be a system changer.
second thing is that you need to have an ability to communicate, an ability to really have empathy for other people and meet them where they're at. And when you can have that kind of connection with them, then you're able to build trust, build coalitions, build a movement that will actually make change in the system. that a change maker really needs is that they need to have critical thinking. You know, the ability to see things from a systems perspective, to apply analytics, to see dynamics and, and what are the like subsystems within the major system that are all playing a role and, and map together the in interconnectedness of what's happening. So the critical ability to look at things and say, this is what's happening, this is what's not happening, this is what the leverage points are, that's super duper important as well. The greatest takeaway from Future Shapers uh, and this event has just been the connection that we've been able to create with all the folks who are here. It's been a really powerful um, experience in going deep and uncovering the layers that typically when we're creating connections we're just stuck at this layer. And I think with Future Shapers we got to go deeper into some of these other aspects of ourselves and show up more vulnerably, more authentically. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, please get yourself comfortable. We'll wait for a few more uh, people before we begin. To make this session interesting, we know that we all miss traveling. So look at my name. That's what I did. You can copy that. I put in the airport code of the airport nearest to where I am right now. So I'm here in Manila in our home. And then I put in my name. You can do that as well. And then what would be fun is we'll, we get to see where everyone is dialing in from. So we can see people from Manila, from Bacol, from Cebu. Last session, we had someone dial in from Sweden, someone from Paris. That would be really fun. So let's do that. And then in a short while, we'll begin uh, this afternoon session.
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, magandang hapon. So, just a few Zoom rules. Okay. First is we will be muting everyone. So, if ever you log in with audio, please make sure to keep your mics muted so that we can have uh, an undisturbed session this afternoon. If you have any comments or questions, please comment them in our chat box. You may also opt. Uh, you may also opt to turn off your camera throughout the session if you uh, if you uh, would like to keep your privacy. But we encourage you to keep them on so we can see your beautiful and handsome faces. In fact, I'm there. See, I'm not just here. I'm also there. Okay, but I'm hiding. I hid behind me. Okay, so we will be recording this video. And we will be posting it on social media. We'll be posting it on YouTube, on Facebook. So by turning on or by keeping your camera turned on, you consent to being seen on this video. Okay? And now to officially start and bless our event today, I would like to invite everyone for a few moments of quiet and prayer. Let's put ourselves in the most holy presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless us today, keep our families, loved ones, and the less fortunate safe from the pandemic sweeping across the globe. Please keep us safe and guide us through these troubling times as we try to adjust and make through the new normal. Help us see the hope and light at the end of the tunnel and be with us as we journey through this pandemic with our heads high. Always keep us safe and healthy, Lord, and uh, all, we, all these we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for us. Saint Benil Dramanson, pray for us. We will give this in our hearts forever. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Good afternoon again, everyone. Um, a beautiful, rainy Saturday afternoon. Thank you to everyone who dialed in to, to this afternoon's Engaged Talk. Yes? I am PQ. I am with Benil the Hi Fi, and I'll be your host this afternoon. I'm very excited for today's session. So, today's session is very exciting as it offers a very different perspective about our relationship with goods and services. We know reduce, reuse, and recycling, right? But don't you feel like that sometimes can feel really inadequate? Don't you feel like the, uh, it's just mitigating a still inevitable collapse of the environment? Well, that's where our topic this afternoon comes in. So. At any time during the presentation, you may chat in your questions in the chat box. We'll be reading your questions or speaker can respond uh, later after the presentation. So to officially begin this afternoon's session, session, I would like to introduce to you our honored speaker. He is an award-winning social entrepreneur working at the nexus of environmental opportunities and challenges in the Philippines. He is a partner at Core Capital, founded in 2018. Okay. Core Capital provides early stage financing for technology companies with a focus on the Philippines. Okay. The firm invests through its first fund, the Gobi Core Philippines Fund, co managed by Gobi Partners. In addition, he is a circular economy pioneer by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which focuses on advocating and creating initiatives for the circular economy. Lastly, he was the country director of Waves for Water Philippines, a global nonprofit providing access to clean water. We are honored to have with us this afternoon, Mr. Carlo Delantar. Thank you so much. So I guess we can start. Uh, TQ, awesome. Yeah. So I'll share my screen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good day. I know it's a, it's a rainy time, but uh, Sit back, relax. Uh, I know everybody's in their comfort of their home. And yeah, we shall start. So uh, this is my screen, as you can see. Um, so warming up just to start the interaction between you and me, um, I'd like to uh, start with the question, what is circular economy to you? So if you have your phone or your laptop or your PC, please go to menti.com 
use the code 714150. It'll ask you a few questions. Just put in your, uh, your, um, your, your answers, and that way we can also understand where you are coming from before we start the, the presentation. I'll give around two minutes just to go through this, and then we have another question afterwards. Okay. Uh, we're uh, receiving answers now. Circular economy is difficult. Um, we'll try to dive deeper in why it's difficult, why it's a real challenge, and um, I'm not sure what it means the old way. Maybe they're talking about a circular economy, something that we've had before, before globalization. Circular economy could be about sustaining something. Yeah, could be. Loops, yeah. Uh, you know, circularity is circle, loops happen all the time. Uh, remaking, systemic, absolutely. Uh, circular economy is definitely a systemic um, issue, a challenge that we need to face. Definitely everyone benefits from that. And I'm, I'm super happy to see that people are putting in their, their thoughts on this. And, you know, I think it's also important for us not being, you know, having this talk in person, it's nice to hear everybody's thoughts in an interactive manner. So far, so good. Uh, everybody's putting in um, relevant answers on what circular economy is. And if this is your first time uh, trying Menti, Mentimeter.com, the bigger the word, that means the more people actually um, providing that answer. So this is sustainability is definitely a hot, um, uh, important topic or at least keyword for circular economy, and that is true. Wasteless, restore, economy, economy, environment, the old way, bilog mundo, that's, that's a good one. Um, system thinking, zero waste, progress, reuse and restore, interconnected, great. Um, really, really uh, happy for the interaction. We'll move forward to the next question. Thank you for all the 22 respondents. Um, to the next question. So why did you join this event? Uh, I know circular economy is, uh, it's been a trending topic for a while, but in the Philippines, as far as my experience goes, it's, um, it, it's still gaining traction and a lot of people don't really understand what circular economy is and we want to talk more about that. But before we do that, I, I want to know, we want to know, why did you join this event? What piqued your attention? Is it because you wanted to learn? Is it because you wanted to understand what it meant being circular? Right. Okay, we have people wanting to learn about clean cities. They think it's new. You want to learn. Growth, it's relevant to this time. Contemporary. Curious is a big topic here, big keyword here. Official definition, and we will definitely uh, dive deeper into that in a bit. Learn, uh, apply it to my work, absolutely. And that is the most important thing, hopefully I can provide for this talk is to help you start and transition towards the circular economy. COVID made me, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, it, it's a good time to, you know, uh, evaluate our lives and how we can move forward especially when we are abruptly uh, forced to do our daily tasks and just think about what's important to us okay um 30 more seconds how to interest new knowledge getting updated principles we'll definitely talk more about that later feasibility yes appropriate text we'll talk more about that I love it. I, I love how everybody's on board. They have a sense of at least where they're coming from. And this is important for me to make sure I um, adjust and have the appropriate um, delivery of the talk. So without further ado, uh, I'll have the, the team uh, move forward to our uh, video. So the video talks about, you know, what is circular economy to give you uh, context 
initial context and then we'll dive deeper a bit more. So take it away. Living systems have been around for a few billion years and will be around for many more. In the living world, there's no landfill. Instead, materials flow. One species' waste is another's food, energy is provided by the sun, things grow, then die, and nutrients return to the soil safely. And it works. Yet as humans, we've adopted a linear approach. We take, we make, and we dispose. A new phone comes out, so we ditch the old one. Our washing machine packs up, so we buy another. Each time we do this, we're eating into a finite supply of resources and often producing toxic waste. It simply can't work long term. So what can? If we accept that the living world's cyclical model works, can we change our way of thinking so that we too operate a circular economy? Let's start with the biological cycle. How can our waste build capital rather than reduce it? By rethinking and redesigning products and components and the packaging they come in, we can create safe and compostable materials that help grow more stuff. As they say in the movies, no resources have been lost in the making of this material. So what about the washing machines, mobile phones, fridges? We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about another sort of rethink, a way to cycle valuable metals, polymers, and alloys, so they maintain their quality and continue to be useful beyond the shelf life of individual products. What if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow? It makes commercial sense. Instead of the throw away and replace culture we've become used to, we'd adopt a return and renew one where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturers. Now, let's put these two cycles together. Imagine if we could design products to come back to their makers their technical materials being reused and their biological parts increasing agricultural value. And imagine that these products are made and transported using renewable energy. Here we have a model that builds prosperity long term. And the good news is, there are already companies out there who are beginning to adopt this way of working. But the circular economy isn't about one manufacturer changing one product. It's about all the interconnecting companies that form our infrastructure and economy coming together. It's about energy. It's about rethinking the operating system itself. We have a fantastic opportunity to open new perspectives and new horizons. Instead of remaining trapped in the frustrations of the present, with creativity and innovation, we really can rethink and redesign our future. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, hopefully from that video, um, you have uh, introductory understanding of what circular economy is. So let's start the program. Um, so why am I here? Uh, I'm here to talk about circular economy. There's a lot to unpack in circular economy, but I want to start with 101, an introduction to what circular economy is. So before I start, um, I'd like to thank um, the organizers for really, you know, putting this all together in a short amount of time. I think finding partners that are focused on aligned values and looking at what the future would be. Um, it's very important to have these partners. So shout out to them for having um, having the stock organized. And thank you so much for making the time for the stock. So I want to start with understanding wha, who am I and why I'm here to speak to you. So Circula is the advocacy that um, 
me and a few people started. And really, the advocacy is to start the initiative of transitioning the Philippines to the circular economy. And I'll talk more about that later. And But before that, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Carlo Delantar. Um, I wear different hats. Uh, just a background, I actually come from a family of manufacturers. So I grew up in a, in a factory, not really in the factory, but my backyard pretty much was the factory. While my parents were working, I would play with cardboard boxes, make it into makeshift cars, while also learning the process of how to create products. So we export all around the world. And for the longest time, I thought, you know, exporters and manufacturers and designers really thought about the accountability and transparency of where their product um, was made. And it felt like that was something that was missing. I grew older and older. I realized that that was pretty much not everybody did that. That wasn't the main practice because there was no regulation to actually or incentive to to get yourself out there and talk about sustainability. But that's changed. So, you know, we've always we've always been told that each object story ends in its disposal. It's very apparent now. You know, what we've discovered is that the story is broader than we, we'd ever imagined. We talk about globalization, but we realize that we're always thinking about the next thing forward, but not really thinking about our responsibility as consumers or manufacturers. Which brings me to uh, Altum. So I started this uh, uh, consultancy and design firm focusing on the circular economy when I realized that there are technologies, there are opportunities and initiatives to actually move towards the circular economy. And when I started, I didn't even know what circular economy was. Um, the funny story there, in short story, was I was invited to go to uh, Davos, the World Economic Forum's uh, main event in Switzerland, and I actually bumped into um, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and IDEO. Uh, long story short, they told me about circular economy. I read through it, and I'm like, wow, this was packaged and presented in a way that, you know, that could actually help us people that are into sustainability or consumers in general could learn about and actually adapt. So this is how I uh, present what we do in Altum. So we, we think about everything as closing the loop. You know, how can we create products, pre-designing them before we even, you know, touch our um, and hold the pen to actually sketch and design products. We think about where do we get our raw materials? Um, where do we, uh, how do we make sure that, you know, we reduce the amount of carbon footprint that we do or different aspects of that all the way to how do we make sure that even during the designing phase, the prototyping phase, we reduce the amount of uh, materials that we use and be efficient with it and where the product goes and how do we make sure that, you know, we're actually closing the loop. So where it comes from and all that, we have different types of materials that we use now. We create different products from it. And the very interesting part is because of how we've made the products, we've created different applications, which means lesser waste. We utilize the most of, of the materials. And from that, we realize that from possibilities of waste, we create new uh, brands and companies that actually adhere to that. So from furniture all the way to fashion accessory. And commitment to sustainability. So this is the mother company, uh, Nature's Legacy, and it's the first uh, benefit corporation in the Philippines focused on design and manufacturing. Uh, and what we realize if we focus on this, you know, concept of closing the loop, especially when you, um, when you're in the Philippines or in the grassroots type of setting, you're actually impacting your stakeholders from where you purchase it, you could probably help them transition to a bit more sustainable practices all the way to the impact of livelihood. And it, I felt that was the most powerful thing about circular economy. And the, the, the next question I had was, how do we make this, um, how do we amplify this, right? And this is where sort of I started becoming a bit more um, uh, audacious with, with my goals instead. Circular economy, uh, emphasis on the economy, we need to work together to, to create a circular economy. 
And that really brought me to this journey for a while now of where do I meet people that are in, uh, in circular economy? This was three, four years ago. And for the longest time, um, I was having difficulty finding them in our country, but also in the region. So what I did, I started scouring and uh, consuming all the, the research, all information I could get. And that led me to an opportunity to be invited to this program called Circular Futures Lab with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. And they invited me to London to learn about their ecosystem, understand how to be circular. I also asked them all the burning questions I've had. Why aren't you in Asia? Um, what, are, you know, what are the priorities and whatnot? And from there, becoming a circular economy pioneer for the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, the definition really is for me to you know, um, transfer what I've learned and bring it to the Philippines. My main job is to make sure that I advocate and you know, uh, pass down the knowledge and be the bridge between Ellen MacArthur Foundation and the Philippines. And from there, I realized the realm of possibilities got bigger and bigger and bigger. So this brought me to Taiwan, um, which is they're trying to be the circular hotspot of uh, Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific. And uh, you wouldn't see it here, but there are companies here that are part of Dell, Apple, um, and so on. So it was very, uh, it, was, it, was, it was humbling yet amazing to be a part of, of, of this talk, but also realize that there are technologies that are already available. Why can't we adapt it here? Or if we don't uh, adapt them, how can we be inspired and aspire to be, you know, to contribute towards a circular economy? This also brought me to Alibaba, where we talked about circular economy in China. And especially in China, where you know we talked about you know the amount of waste they're producing because they are the manufacturing hub of the world, but how they're actually transitioning towards sustainable uh, initiatives and technologies as well. Um, the interesting part of where uh, I'm, 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 you know, gathering all this information. This really got me to great workshops and uh, interesting topics in collaboration with. I was invited uh, in the uh, platform for accelerating the circular economy at the World Economic Forum. You can see here is a great example of how they've uh, created uh, a specific product where you, instead of having water in the material, you're actually, you just have to spritz water to create, to activate the product. And it's purely circular as much as they want to say, but it's the right, it's the step to the right direction. This also gave me the opportunity to learn from you know the best organizations that are trying to transition to the circular economy and one of them is Nike that has created different technologies um, and has opened their technologies and opportunities of you know what areas of their um, supply chain that needs to be circular and be utilized. So enough of that why are we here? Um, we talk about circular economy 101. So here, um, we want to talk about design. At the end of the day, we need to design our product, uh, our, our mind, our mindset towards circularity. So we need design in order to create a circular economy. So going to the official uh, slides, um, the linear model is ripe for disruption. Before we talk about what's the difference between the linear and circular economy, um, we want to talk about, you know, the linear material flows. Here you can see, you know, how much plastics packaging end up in landfill or incinerated or leak into natural systems. By 2050, we could have um, a ratio of, you know, one plastic bottle, one plastic to one fish. Um, and you could see here that the astonishing rate of where the global economy is, and if we don't change our ways, it's going to be uh, very hard to live in the next couple of years. But what's interesting is when uh, EMF did that uh, research, this just came out uh, a month ago, is that by 2040, we will have four times more plastic stock in the ocean. Um, by 2040, we'll have, 20, uh, we'll have more plastics use doubled, actually. So when you're thinking about just plastic as a material itself, um, we see in, in just a, in a simplistic manner that because of how much growth there is in globalization, there are more people that are in the middle class that have more disposable income. 
people don't really realize that they're actually um, 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 adding to the problem. And we want to change that. Fibers for, for fashion here too, just to give you an idea. But going now to what the circular economy is, circular economy is regenerative by design. And if we want to talk about what the difference is between linear and circular economy, on your left of your screen, that is the linear economy. So let's say the linear economy means, you know, we take, we make, and dispose. So let's say you have a new phone. Maybe in a year, they upgrade it to another phone. So what happens? You just upgrade and you don't really know where that phone goes to. Of course, there are policies that come into mind when that happens. But what about the manufacturers? Are they, are they actually thinking about their products becoming, you know, utilization is a big, uh, important factor of circular economy. So how do we utilize the, the, the parts and components that can still be used longer term? And so basically, if we have a line, we want to bend it. When we bend it, then it becomes restorative and regen regenerative. So how do we do that? So if there, were, if there was any part of this, uh, this talk that I want you to take note of, it would be this. There are three circular economy principles. Designing out waste and pollution, keeping products and materials in use, and regenerate natural systems. So if you were starting on the onset and say, okay, how do I start becoming circular? Choose one of the three and then move towards getting three out of three. However, if we want to complete all three principles for your initiative or your organization, we need to start collaborating with people. So the most that I've seen have been two. And I'll explain more about that later. So the question is, what if we could redesign everything for a circular economy? You can go to online circulardesignguide.com and all the, all the resources are there. And before we even get there, we really need to you know, dig deeper. Um, William, William McDonough, one of my idols, uh, said design is the first signal of human intention. So that means for the longest time, we never really took it to heart. We were, uh, our intention was to create products just for selling products. Right, but that's very economical. What about the social and environmental part? We need to put that as part of our design thinking um, process. So what is our intention? We need to zoom in by zooming out, right? We need to look at the circular economy. The world has a systemic um, issue, right? We've brought in legacy systems from a long time ago um, but in order for us to understand which areas that need to be circular, we need to zoom in and see, okay, which areas of the supply chain do we need to change? And that doesn't, and that doesn't mean that we need to, you know, completely change everything all at once, but we need to, you know, plug in areas that have less friction. And that way we can start, um, you know, propagating areas to be circular. So we'd like to um, illustrate this as, a perforated circle. Each perforation represents a process of your design thinking or your company. Now, if you were to ask yourself which areas can be circular, you don't have to start with everything. Maybe you could start with the material. Maybe you can start with your, um, your uh, ESGs. It could be as easy as procurement. It could be the people you're marketing with, and so on and so forth. And to understand that a bit, we need to talk about circular design. So circular design is designing products, services, and systems for a circular economy. We need to zoom in on user needs and zoom out to a systems perspective. We need to intentionally create things from the outset. And here you can see different aspects and models and strategies for you to embed to the principles of circular economy. So it could be material choices, raw, raw, raw materials. It could be product to service, IoT, um, inter, uh, internet of things, which is embedding intelligence, modularity, like I said about like uh, cell phones and, and smartphones or any product to uh, Product life extension, you know, um, can we do the repair economy? You know, if we, have, if we have a bag that has a hole, we don't need to throw it. We just need to have, have it repaired. 
Um, so examples here, just to give you, you know, now that you know you're, you you have an understanding of how circular design works, I want to talk about like examples of circular uh, economy models already. Uh, Brian Bauer from Algramo created um, uh, Algramo, so it's pretty much a a vending machine but for uh, liquids. Um, so pretty much we're trying to uh, eliminate uh, packaging, right? You, we're we're uh, extending um, packaging for what you've had and then uh, refilling them with uh, different types of uh, products. So yeah, going back, so delivery models, what they're trying to redesign is delivery models. The more things and products you're delivering, you're actually not making the world a better place. So they're making it efficient to use, you know, um, uh, vending machines. That way you uh, reduce the amount of consumption and use of, of plastic packaging. Next is uh, another one for delivery models. This is more on using intelligence and uh, trucks, right? So if you think about it, let's say you go to a supermarket, there's a delivery truck that comes in and uh, they bring in all the stocks that they need to, to stock. Usually they don't know how much they're needing and they don't forecast. All they know is they have enough inventory at any given time. But if you really think about it, the more products you put in in a truck, you, you consume uh, more fuel. Um, uh, the, the, the expiry date is another thing. So what they're trying to do is say, what if we can do uh, bulk, uh, bulk groceries? Pretty much what we're doing here. So these types of models are, not, are nothing new. It's just that they're making it um, scalable. Another one is here. I think this is a great example of a design. Uh, Trio Cup. So basically, uh, Tom created, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of people drink coffee every single day morning, lunchtime, evening. But the biggest problem is the cups. The cups have different materials, right? You have the cup, the cup holster, and then you have the lid. But what if we can have, and those are different materials, but what, what if we can create a product design that's completely just one material and completely recyclable? So the, the ideas here are not nothing new. It's just that they've realized that in order for them to address consumer needs, they need to redesign products in order to address your needs. This one is a bit different. This is more of an app as a product, as a service. If, re, if you bring your own cup, you're actually look, um, they provide discounts for, um, for, um, for stores that actually advocate for you know, bringing your own um, cup. Um, this, is a, this one is sachet. So this is a, a hot topic in the Philippines, but pretty much what, um, um, Rodrigo wanted to adhere was, you know, instead of using sachets or plastics as a way to pack it, what if we use a uh, specific um, uh, safe packaging, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of things to unpack here. We can talk about plastic some other time, but it gives you a sense of like what circular models there are. Um, lastly, a good friend of mine, David, uh, he used uh, seaweed material. Uh, to create, you know, to as a way to um, substitute or um, um, replace sachets or even paper packaging. When you eat a burger in McDonald's or a fast food chain, it's paper packaging. Literally, after you eat it, you throw it out. But you know, there there should be another product that's uh, uh, that could be more circular than paper, and maybe it could be uh, seaweed. So, what if you could redesign everything for a circular economy? And that really is a question that we want you guys to think about after this talk. You know, what, what are things that we can talk about? And we can talk about like examples locally that, um, that, could, uh, that are happening already in the Philippines. And we really are called to be the architects of the future, right? So all of us here, your intention of being here and understanding what circular economy is, is really the first step forward to a circular future. So for you to learn, we need to, you know, what we learned today, we want to um, advocate it and actually talk more about it for, for other people to learn. And once we embed this mindset for more people, then we get a little bit closer to the circular economy. So here's a, a, a bat butterfly diagram of what a circular economy is. And I want to, want to uh, just demystify one thing for you guys is long term, when we do hit circular economy, Upcycling or waste as a resource 
theoretically speaking, will be eliminated. What will be replaced though, what will replace that is the term industrial symbiosis. So what that means is before any product or waste even gets out of manufacturing or, or the suppliers and designers, all the waste has been utilized and circled back to the supply chain. So that means we're actually reducing the amount of um, mishandling of, of the products once it gets to the consumers. And I understand that consumers, they have their ways of you know, um, pointing their fingers of where the products would be going. But it's also important to know that if we can reduce the amount of um, handling before it gets to the consumers, the better. So this is circular, and um, to give you an idea, questions on, um, I, know, I know I'm running out of time, but um, in terms of like what's happening in the Philippines, we did a report last year. Uh, we had a, another talk like this, a bit more focused on circular design. We had over 150 registrants and 90 attendees. We mapped, we voluntary, we had uh, volunteers that mapped their initiatives of 24. And it was fairly interesting that half of the initiatives were waste as a resource. And that's completely fine, but we need to move forward and think, okay, from waste as a resource, how can we move towards industrial symbiosis? So it gives you an idea of what strategies there are. Um, and a closer look, um, and I was surprised with this, uh, with this uh, data was that um, from the 12 of waste as a resource, uh, five of them were actually from f and I was expecting more from manufacturing, but I'm glad f and um, was, uh, was leading. And I think that's, that's good too, especially, when, especially now when we're talking about food deliveries and food waste that's happening. Um, and before, before I end the, my, my part of the talk, uh, I want to show you um, a Circular Economy Club's uh, database of uh, initiatives all around the world. They did a uh, mapping week last, uh, last year. And if you can see here, we only had one, only one initiative map. And we want to change this, right? So we did the, the, uh, the report mapping report last year, and we want to increase that this year maybe to 50, maybe to 100. And this is where you guys come in now that you learn, you know, maybe your companies have, are actually doing an initiative inside your company or you're doing a startup or you're doing an initiative. Help me, help us get to a better leaderboard. And if you've noticed here in the countries, majority are in Europe. For Asia, there's only one that, that reached top 10 and that's Taiwan. And what's surprising is there's a lot of great technologies in Taiwan that we can actually apply here. Um, so feel free to um, go through the slide. Um, you can take a screenshot of this and you can, uh, it'll take five minutes to map, please do. I encourage you to um, uh, put your uh, initiatives in so we can feature it in Circular Economy Club mapping. And here are some um, um, initiatives all around the Philippines that we've mapped so far. I'm sure you know some of, the, uh, of the, these initiatives. And what's next, right? We talk about, you know, there are initiatives already happening, but uh, a lot of them don't know if they're circular. And we, the, my goal is to make sure we advocate and talk about circular economy and bring them to the fold towards circular economy. So loss and incentives for green jobs. And, you know, Peniatex is known all over the world, but it's act, the, the material is actually here in the Philippines. So there are initiatives that have started in the Philippines, but are already being adapted in the world, and we should be proud of that. Banana tax is another thing. So Taiwan's using uh, banana uh, leaf waste uh, from the Philippines and manufacturing it here in the Philippines towards uh, better products. So lastly, tool to support. Where do we go next? Especially for you guys, please do go to circulardesignguide.com to check out uh, different resources um, for you to learn. And there's a big community on LinkedIn if you wanna learn more about it. Um, and for anybody that wants to be inspired and to see any more, uh, more products that have been conceptualized and being commercialized, please do check out the Instagram hashtag called Circular Designers with the plural. There's over a thousand already and it's a great resource to be inspired and see how we can localize that. 
And with that, um, that is my uh, presentation. Um, I went out of uh, over time. Please do feel free to message me if you have other questions. We'll go to Q and A. But before that, I'd like to I'd like to uh, have uh, the last slide, the last video before we go to Q and A. So take it away. We live in a world with finite materials. We are throwing an awful lot of electronics. Plastic food, carpets, clothing away. It's a waste of precious materials. If we could build an economy that would use things rather than use them up, we could build a future that really could work in the long term. You design the product in a way that can be taken apart once the consumer has finished using them. You remanufacture it and give it out again. You can reduce your production cost hugely if applied correctly. Instead of garments ending up in landfill, companies can repurpose it, reuse it, making profit out of their waste. We take some resources from nature and bring it back in the form of nutrients. It's very much a natural cycle. We use 70% less water than conventional agricultural methods. Our packaging is not a waste, it's something that you can consume and eat. We redesign everyday products to make them fully recyclable. We farm as close to nature as is possible. The H&M Group has set ambitious targets to use 100% sustainably sourced materials. There is a lot of conversation about not buying clothes, but different models where you can rent clothing. We develop fully modular headphones that we offer on a subscription basis. The circular economy itself is inevitable in my view. It's not one fix, it's about the entire system being redesigned. This is to me the only way to fight climate change, to fight pollution, to fight waste. This is a business model that stacks up. Global companies cannot survive in the future without transitioning towards a circular economy. That is a really exciting future. Great, awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carlo, for that uh, very enlightening uh, discussion. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to you about uh, the topic this afternoon. So uh, it was really eye-opening for me. Because we always hear now that's the way it is or that's how it's been done for generations. But uh, having heard this uh, discussion gives me a sense of hope that there is uh, another way. No? So now that I'm sure that uh, we have a, a ton of questions from the audience. So. What you can do is you can chat your questions in the chat box so you can find them. Or you can find the button below. Here. I'm a YouTuber now. It's a bit it's here. Okay? You can type in your questions or feedback or just ideas you'd like to share with others. And we'll try to mention everyone or answer all the questions uh, in our uh, in our time slot coming up. But now I'd like to talk to Carlo or ask Carlo a few questions. Now Carlo. How did you get uh, how did you get introduced to circular economy and uh, was there like a life changing experience for you that really got you into this idea that you really bought into the idea of circular economy can you share that with us uh, yeah so i think uh, like i said during my uh, short summary story was um, I, I come from a family of manufacturers and we we've, we've done sustainable manufacturing since i was a kid i i was pretty much like i grew up with it and I, I thought that was the normal thing, but growing older and older, understanding what climate change was apparently wasn't. So uh, from there, uh, I felt like I was uh, so passionate about it. I realized that maybe there, it's it's possible, and if nobody's doing it, you know, why look for the people that are doing it and see that, you know, um, they they acknowledge and say what you're doing is not crazy. It's actually real. And from there, I realized that this is the way forward. Right, the the numbers make sense. You know, we're burning fossil fuels every single second. It just makes sense if if you if you still create new products for the sake of just creating new products, 
it doesn't make sense. I mean, electricity, is, um, solar power is uh, being very competitive now, but, you know, things are happening in parallel, but in terms of the global economy still adapting to it, it's a long way to go. So I felt like that was like the motivating factor. And uh, especially in the Philippines, we realized that, you know, there are circular economy um, uh, examples already happening, but we've never acknowledged it and we should. And how do we scale that? That's the next, that's the next step. Rick, you mentioned that the numbers make sense and uh, actually transitioning to a circular economy can make business sense. Now, um, what do you think needs to change in society in terms of uh, leadership or how we, or in, in our personal lives, like psychologically, emotionally, even financially, or mentally, how we think you know, for circular economy to be to be desirable to people, for it to be financially viable, and uh, for it to be actually possible. Na, kasi siyempre, of course, we like new things, diba? We like new things. And uh, having that attitude of liking new things basically results to a linear sort of economy. So I'm thinking na for us to fully transition to circular, I feel like it, we have to change not just in uh, not just in an economic as an economic model, but also as a society. As a society. So, what do you think needs to change? That's a that's a loaded question. Uh, I'll try to summarize so we can address more questions. But uh, the the problem is, is it's a systemic problem. Uh, on on the hand of the people creating creating our products, uh, there were it it's not mandated. Policy is a bit lax. Right. It's too relaxed, it's too lenient to the point where, you know, as long as you, you know, um, you just meet the minimum standards, that's fine. Um, so that's, that's the manufacturing it. And then the rest, it just becomes this, you know, the, the ripple effect through the supply chain is that as long as you get your job done, that's fine. Right. And, you know, you have companies that are requiring a lot of their supply chain to adhere to their standards. That way, you know, everybody follows you know that's the problem eh? the, the 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 pass of hand right yeah when you pass it on to another supplier or different organization then they're legally obligated to do something about it but the, the legalities and and the responsibilities are very there's a lot of gray areas so you have you have that side the 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 supplier's end now on the consumer's end uh the biggest problem is access right um it's a good and a bad problem good because Everybody has access to everything now, especially now, COVID. Right? We talk about COVID. Everybody can just, you know, every, there's a surge on e-commerce um, um, orders already. Everybody's using e-wallet. That's the mindset of convenience, access. But then the, the, the drawback of access is also which areas are, actually, are, are we actually compromising, right? So um, when you have access, there, there needs to be a trade back. And a lot of uh, consumers don't see that because that's not something people want to market because it sheds a light on how, uh, the, where the gray areas are and how people are actually using. So just to, just to sum up, um, suppliers and they, have, they need to have responsibility, transparency and accountability. And on the other side, the consumers also, number one, they need to demand you know, sustainable products, they need to demand that demand for government to create proper policies, but also they should be also be uh, responsible of their ways. We talk about, you know, we talk about sustainability, but people sometimes they drink from a straw and after that they throw it, they don't even recycle it properly, right? So it's, it's a mindset, it's systemic, it's, it's how people were born. And just to cap it off, when before we had access, before we had industrialization, Everybody was in a circular uh, mindset. We tended to our own house. We tended to farming. We only we only used what we needed. We didn't have to travel so far. We just focus on us, right? Now the question is, how do we bring that back to an age where we're in an age of information and access and convenience, right? So I think that's that's the that's the big question mark that's always been uh, hard and. <laughs> We all have to work together. It's really challenging, no? and uh, it, it takes a wicked problem that has a lot of galamay, a lot of moving parts that have, that have to be fixed. No? <laughs> so I'd like to move on to a question by Dre and Rona from Quezon. Oh, nice. Okay, the question is, 
a circular economy mainly just about the product or the packaging? Where are they applicable elsewhere in, in other systems outside of the consumer manufacturer relationship? Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, it broke up. Okay, uh, the first half of the question is, is circular economy mainly just about the product or the packaging? Or is it applicable to other systems beyond the consumer manufacturer relationship? Well, technically, it's the whole supply chain, right? The value chain, where, how, how you create the raw materials from. Maybe you're farming it, you're 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 building it, and the 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 manufacturing processing end of how how are you creating the design? Are you just creating a design because it's only good for the user? What about the environment? Where are you getting it, right? And then also the consumer aspect is, you know, the product, the packaging. How do we make sure that when you experience the product? The experience is not just getting the product and using it, but also, you know, the delivery of it to you, um, the the disposal of it, right? We don't think about that, right? It, it's because the convenience of a trash can right beside you, asige bahala na, let's 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 pass it on to somebody that will deal with that, right? So uh, yes, circular. That's why it's called circular economy. Uh, economy emphasis there is that. We all need to work together to reach circularity, right? Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of companies are going towards, are pledging towards being circular. Apple has has done that. H and M. We have companies here that are moving towards circularity. They're exploring it. Um, they're they're working on their ESGs and they're working on the sustainability goals. But that's still like that's just like the minority of companies. What about the rest? Right, and that's where policy comes in. That's where you know we incentivize them to work on it. And I think a great example for this is Taiwan. Right, Taiwan started. They were they were about to reach their quota of their landfill. They were almost there, and all of a sudden they turn it around. And you know they're amazing. Um, there's there's a lot of playbooks there that we can learn from, and it's close to it. So yeah. So it's not really just about the packaging, but uh, the, the whole conception of the product, the manufacturing, the delivery, even the dis and the disposal. Disposal is, shouldn't actually be part of the vocabulary of circular economy. No? It's about the collection, maybe reuse, and enrichment of new products. Uh, the next question uh, comes from uh, from RMS. Okay, initials lang ito. Okay. Any idea how we can drive changing to circular economy in the Philippines, especially getting the big businesses to come in with the concept? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, there's, there's a lot of work to be done. So you have the consumers looking for, you know, better ethically made, sustainable, mm -hmm. circular products. Um, you also, it, it, it works with any type of, uh, initiatives that you want, right? Um, you need somebody that wants to focus on policy to change how government, you know, mandates it. You also have manufacturers buy-in of why would they change to sustainable products? Does it make economic sense, right? Um, if you if you can if you can uh, um, provide that data and say you know, yes, it, it makes economic sense. The next thing is how do you get their buy-in? Usually you do a pilot. Right, you do a pilot, then you go to an awareness aspect. You bring the media in. So even that, just 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 changing the mindset of people. There's also its own uh, value chain of making it work. So um, I think definitely talks like this is is helpful. Um, next is if you're learning about this, definitely advocate about it. Um, we 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 plan to do more workshops with with the team here down the line. Um, Maybe you, maybe you can advocate it with your with your with your company and say, hey, maybe we should look at circular economy. Talk to your, you know, sustainability depart department, or even just start there, right? Have a policy to have a sustainability officer, right? And then have them explore it. They're the ones that are actually propagating, talking, and um, um, uh, marketing circular circularity for for their business and whatnot. So you have it. First is always planting those seeds first. Right, and that's the best way to to, to do it. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Now, um, big businesses or companies who create products, parang, of course they respond to market needs. So 
uh, with activities like this, talks like this, it brings the concept to the public consciousness and it makes it makes circular economy part of the market demand. <laughs> and uh, maybe just to, to add to that, no, if we make it into a market demand, then the market will will supply it. And um, it can be through policy, it can be through through our interest in more more circular products. No? So I hope I hope it becomes it really becomes a big uh, public agenda so that uh, companies really will have will have no reason to disregard this whole concept. Okay? Uh, the next question comes from Madesa Heroso. Hello po. I would just like to ask the speaker if if the Philippines can can adopt to circular economy and can the people who are in the lower income class adopt to it? I think this talks about the, the long tail of the market, no? Na, uh, the thingy the thingy thingy culture of the the Philippines, given that we are a third third world country. Okay, so can can the Philippines adopt to circular economy? Uh uh, I, I want to answer that, and the reason why we do a 101 is to have, you know, the most simple way of addressing a specific topic. So I don't want to get te too technical. But to answer that, we have, we we've we've done that for generations already. Good example. Okay, let's say you're doing um, Simbang Gabi or um, uh, I don't know, uh, early morning markets, right? Pumunta ka dun. What do you see? Budbud, suman. What is it wrapped in? Leaves, right? It's it's already packaged in a way that it's it's snack size. We're using um, um, not reusable, but uh, you know, um, uh, sustainable type of packaging already. You know, and I think that's a great question, right? What what uh, the the person uh, brought up is that's a great way to design things. You know, we don't have. It's the wrong way and a uh, very hard way to change the habits of people. Why don't we adjust to their habits already and say, okay, San Banda Dito, can we actually make it circular? So for example, in, in Cebu, uh, in Visayas, we have this, um, we have this uh, way of wrapping rice. We call it puso, right? It's, it's woven in, in a, a leaf, um, coco uh, and, and coconut leaves, Pandan leaves, whatever it is, and you weave it, you create livelihoods for people there, and it, they can it's abundant, and each one is pretty much like half cup full, so you already know how much you need, and when if you don't uh, when you're done with it, you just throw the the you just throw the the leaves right, so it's a great example for that. Um, maybe another one is we're already doing you know like mga refilling stations of water. It's already happening, right? I think that day everybody drank like all the condos before they would drink. Uh, either filtration is great; it's a great way to start off. Um, refilling stations is way better than getting, you know, more uh, single-use plastics from from a convenience store. Why can't we have all convenience stores with uh, water refilling stations, right? Uh, instead of having just like your own, like we're already people are already advocating for bringing your own. Cups, why don't you do the same thing? Right, so it's 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 happening. Um, we're not the most adaptive one in in the world. That's fine. But then, if there are designers here, focus on the ones that will that are already happening in in you know um, all aspects of society. I, I think there's a big change there. I, I know Dave Albao is here. They're working on. Um, um, Sari Sari stores, they're trying to redesign Sari Sari stores that don't have single use plastics, right? You know, you're eliminating sachets from there because, you know, Sari Sari stores, they're everywhere. So think about cultural, social, economical, uh, even religious, you know, religion, which area can be, you know, I think religion, um, I don't want to be, uh, I, I don't want to touch on that too much, but that religion or even just like churches have been a great way to advocate for changing mindsets of people. Yeah. I think uh, in one of your first few slides when you asked what circular economy it was to people, I, I read there that it was the way of it's, it's the way of the past. And I think it's a great reminder that uh, we just have to 
parang we just have to know what we need and then get that so, to, to prevent to prevent us from getting too much things and uh, that of course entails packaging and uh, packaging means more trash so it's really about I feel like it's really about uh, knowing what you be, being conscious of what you need being uh, uh, knowing your limitations as well okay now we are a bit over time so uh, Unfortunately, we have to go to our last two questions. So thank you to everyone who's been asked, uh, sending in their questions. We hope we can uh, respond to them all, but um, we, we just have to. We just have time for two more questions. Uh, this question is from Annika De Leon. As consumers, how can we push uh, push big corporations to operate on the circular economy? And are there any specific local companies working towards being sustainable? That you recommend we support. Yeah. Are there? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's 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 on the spot. Uh, I, I don't I don't want to say names um, more specifically, but maybe start with communities. Um, maybe start with groups that are vetted, or at least like you know people are trying to to um, they they share knowledge, they share and advocate for other companies. Um, I think for you guys is it's important now that you know the principles. I think sustainability, the word sustainable, sustainability, it's been thrown at you, me, everyone, but we don't ask the question, why is it sustainable? Uh, for us, it's I think uh, for me, when I when I hear somebody say they're sustainable, so I, can, I, I think it, they're trying to clean my conscience and say, okay, if you buy this, then I'm cleaning your conscience. It's like, we call it, I, I call it the conscience tax, right? You buy this, you're not, you're, you're not making the world a, a, a worse place, right? So we need to ask the question, uh, are they actually sustainable? Are they actually circular? So maybe start there. You have the three principles, ask them, which part are you actually, you know, uh, keeping products and materials in, in use? Are you re regenerating natural systems, you know? Um, and if you do that, the, you ask them the right questions. Of course, maybe they, they feel uh, yeah, you're, you're, asking the, you're asking the right questions, but also they need to change. And once we get to a point where you know people are a bit more critical of why it's sustainable, why it's circular, then everybody needs to adjust, right? I mean, to say everybody's um, everybody's saying, oh, they're sustainable, but they're really not. Unfortunately, I'm I, I'm I'm just gonna say that I'm not gonna call out people, but it's only a minority that are truly sustainable because they're adhering to the right certifications, the right, the right, um, the right, uh, the right systems to do it. And it's documented. A lot of the, a lot of what people are saying, it's not documented. They're passing over the responsibility to somebody else. Right. And I, I think that's, that's the wrong way to think about it. So it really starts with the demand, right? The supply will happen no matter what, you know, but, Economies, economies of scale at the end of the day, things will, the, the price will normalize where everybody can have access to it if the demand is there. So I think, you know, there's, there's a lot to unpack there, but maybe, you know, go to Facebook, try looking at, you know, where we're, we're starting to build the community here and we'll definitely know you once we have that. But, you know, start with communities like, you know, like zero waste communities, Facebook groups, or like, I don't know, there's, there's a lot. And then from there, ask questions. Um, you don't lose anything. Asking questions is probably the most circular thing that you could probably do um, mm. to actually feed your feed, feed your soul and your and your mindset on what's what's the best way to be circular. But I think you should start there, asking the questions. Are are they circular or not? If not, that's fine. You should ask them. Can you be a bit more circular? Can you adhere to a specific standard? You know, and that's the that's the that's the that's the next way forward. And that's the reason why you have policies in place to help um, um, build build this aspect. But there's definitely a lot of um, uh, initiatives all around the Philippines that are working on this already. You just need to look for it. And I think that's, uh, that's the hardest part to, to, is to get yourself out there. No. But when you do, there's a lot of communities and I'm seeing a lot of the sustainability community here actually. So, hello. <laughs> yeah, and I think you, you posted a while ago. You showed us like a link to to a, like a database, a community of circular economy efforts. I hope you can share that with the 
to the group later on. Maybe we can put in the link uh, when we post the video on YouTube, so you can you can you, you can continue to answer that and connect with other circular economy or companies that support circular economy or really make an effort. Okay, our last question for this afternoon. I'm sorry, uh, we have to, to uh, ask our last questions. Uh, you have said that there are technologies that are available that support circular economy. How can an MSME access those technologies in order to contribute to saving the environment? So like links to those technologies or ways to access those technologies. Oh, there, there's, there's definitely a lot. Uh, I, the, best, the best ones that I, I felt um, were an easy way to be efficient with your time are like trade shows. There's, there's a lot of like biofatch. Uh, you can go to B Corp uh, directory to at least like, you know, um, it's already pre-filtered to the point where, okay, which ones are actually adhering to specific environmental certification, social uh, certification. And, and, and like I said, the, the, there's, there's a question here too, is like, you know, some certifications are not the best way to measure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I completely agree with that. But it's a better way to documenting things. Um, we don't have that, then people don't follow. It's, it becomes the wild, wild west. So, um, and especially here in the Philippines, that when we're talking about certifications, there's a lot of gaming the system. So the question is, which brand of certification do you, um, do you feel like is trusted or actually credible? And you also have to make sure effectively that whatever you're doing strategically is good for your bottom line. Bottom line, when I say your, your sales, your profit margins, your, your environment, uh, your the environmental costs, and also your, your social uh, costs and implications, because um, you also need to adhere to your markets, right? Um, kung exporting ka, you know, you have to adhere to, to global standards, and the best way to do that, you have to, and also, there's a there's a certain respect to certifications, but there's also some um, disrespect to certifications, especially the ones that don't see the value of it. Now, if you don't want to take the certification, it's fine. But you can always just say like, we're adhering to these to these guidelines and certifications. And as long as you have the doc documentations for that, by all means, check it out. And you know, if you don't have those, I'm sure you have like competitors or specific industry players that are doing something similar. Check out their impact reports. Right, be critical. See if you know they're doing their uh, methodology right. You know, maybe they're just using the numbers as a way to market things. You have to be critical. If you can't be critical, then um, then it's harder to actually move forward. The mindset needs to start there. Yeah. So certifications are really tricky. You know? So um, it really boils down to being sincere with the certification. Being sincere. Uh, in getting them and then practicing, really practicing what you what you preach in getting those certifications. So, unfortunately, that is our last question for this afternoon. Thank you, everyone, for uh, sending in your questions. We will try to address all of those questions uh, in our YouTube post or uh, in our post uh, event uh, emails. But thank you so much for them, and may maybe in our uh, in our next event. Well, if you really, if you want like a rerun of this session, kulang talaga yung oras. But we really hope that uh, uh, we have time again with Carlo to discuss this. And uh, Carlo, may I ask for your like uh, a few like last messages to our audience? Uh, keep following uh, Benil's uh, page. Uh, I'm sure we'll do a few more. Um, I'll have Abby talk more about the reuser manual. Um, I think it's important to have that something to bring with you guys as an assignment. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, feel free to, to reach out. Um, please do take the circular mapping. Um, we're trying to feature more this year. And I'd like to say that everything that I do here, um, as a pioneer, I actually report to EMF. So they know what we're doing in the Philippines. And I'm, I'm really closely reporting what's happening in the Philippines. Um, I know there there's some exciting uh, news from the government side, from the SME side, and NGOs, so on and so forth. So um, send them in. Um, please feel, don't be afraid to to message, and I'll I'll try to accommodate as much as I can. But thank you so much for your time, and thank you for engage for having me.
you, Carlo. So, uh, circular economy can be a very big uh, abstract, sometimes abstract concept, but uh, there is a way to do that. So, um, maybe to to give us like a, a, a manual to go through this, I'd like to uh, call on the director of Hi-Fi, Ms. Abby, to share with us what they call the reusers manual. Ms. Abby? Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Carlo, for for the honor of having you talk about circular economy because I know this is just the 101 and I know that um, a lot of a lot of in the audience would want to have a deep dive. So we're working on something uh, in the future with Carlo. I hope we could we could talk about more of the details on how we could actually design products, services, systems um, that could be circular, potentially be circular. Um, I'm also very um, conscious that this does not become an echo chamber of everyone essentially a believer of um, the whole could be abstract concept of sustainability um, and uh, how do we say this one circularity so so that we we, we try away we, we we don't become um, um, abstract and I want to share something that um, essentially save Philippine seas um, um, develop in partnership with a lot of other um, organizations and a few of them are in the audience so I know that Wala Usik, um, Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation is here, Dave Albao, um, also Sha from, from um, WWF, I know you're here as well. So uh, we've partnered in, in developing this reusers manual and we're hoping that you could actually share it with your, with your family, uh, org mates, Church mates, like like Carla said, the church could be a very powerful um, platform to shape mindset. So, and I know the church is very big on good stewardship. So, this is something that's not uh, polar opposite of what it's preaching. So, I'm hoping that you could spread the word and share this one. We're actually um, giving the download of this one in the in the chat. Um, yeah, so the Hi-Fi team already included it in the chat, so you could download it and forward it to as many people as you can. But essentially, it's um, it's such a conundrum because July was celebrated as a plastic-free month. Um, we're now August 1, and, you know, this whole pandemic has really driven us to use more single-use plastic, more than ever. We already have a trouble um, coping with our plastic waste, right? Um, all the more now. So it has multiplied, um, but but I want everyone to to feel like you know it's not um, it's it doesn't have to be okay. So this reusers manual will give us a, some sort of a guide on on how we could actually cope and be safe and be healthy and during this time of pandemic without having to use um, single use plastic. So maybe the next slide. I'll just go briefly with. Okay, so it's very interesting that viruses and other pathogens can actually in exist in both single-use and reusable items. So, you're, so some, there is really no logic completely behind um, the increase of single-use because it can exist in both. Um, perhaps in, 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 in hospitals and medical uh, equipment, it is necessary. But for a lot of things that we're doing, like I know that um, delivery, take out food and even shopping online has increased packaging, single use packaging. So um, are there ways to go around it? So let's look at the slides. Uh, next one, please. Of course, um, always wash your hands. It's still the safest thing. Wash your reusables. Next slide. Um, okay, so I'll just briefly show it to you. Next slide. I think this is very important. Um, this was mentioned a lot of times. We're so used to already bringing our own bottles. So let's keep continue doing that. Um, my pet peeve, because I know a lot of us would probably like milk tea. <laughs> the milk tea that we buy, we purchase is a lot of single-use packaging. Um, but I do know that if you actually give your own um, container, they will, they can put your milk tea in your own container so it is, it is possible. Definitely cook more at home. We not only save on money, we eat better food, healthier food, and reduce plastic packaging as well. Next slide. 
okay, so this is in California and, and you know, California has been very strict on single use plastics, but because of the pandemic, um, they have actually said, you know, we will have to use more, uh, we're okay to use single use plastic because of the pandemic. So that's kind of sad, but um, they're still very much promoting um, reusable bags, people bringing their own grocery bags. Next slide. Okay, now this one you always see that if you're if you're dining in, I think it's good to to be prepared um, to actually access the menu already because some restaurants would give you um, disposable menus, so they print it in paper and after that day they throw it away. So if we could be more prepared, so it really is just a matter of preparation, like like we said before, um, decades ago, maybe thirty years ago, maybe even more. Um, we have been practicing circularity. I mean, I remember as a child, I'll go to the Sari Sari store and I bring my bottle of, an empty bottle and buy cooking oil or, or toyo, right? So that happens. And, and I, you know, it just so happens that whole, that whole system disappeared. Um, like has been said, you know, it always starts with the demand for it. So if we diminish the demand for all this single use packaging, then companies will listen. Next slide. Okay, so that's basically it. Just uh, I think that's just eight pages of easy, easy to consume uh, stuff that we could share with people. Um, so again, this is a uh, this 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 uh, how do you say this one? This complements this whole circular economy movement, and this has been brought to you by Save Philippine Seas in partnership with um, all the or other beautiful organizations that you can support who are really promoting this whole circularity. So again, thank you so much, Carlo. Thank you for, for joining us. And access the free downloadable. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Ms. Abby. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Abby, for, that, uh, for sharing with us the, the reusers manual. So that officially concludes our talk this afternoon. So. May I invite everyone to turn on their camera briefly lang. We're going to have a class picture. So if you want to have your picture taken with the whole group, we're going to post it online. Uh, please turn on your, your camera for a short class picture. The LA, will, uh, LA will take photos of our class photo, no? LA? Yeah. Okay, one, two, another one, one, two, last one, one, two. Thank you. Thank you, LA. Thank you, everyone, for, for being with us this afternoon. Um, we'd like to inform everyone also that uh, you will be getting certificates. So you'll, you'll get certificates after you answer the feedback form. That's where we'll get the database of of the attendees. So the link is in the chat box. There's a feedback form. And please like and follow with HiFi in all of our platforms via the link three link. So if you click on link three and then you link for Facebook in uh LinkedIn for Instagram, Twitter, etc. etc. It's all there. And then please also follow or visit uh Circulo's website at altumconcepts.com slash circulo. Okay. So again, thank you everyone for being with us for this afternoon's Engage Talk. We hope to have you with us once again in our next one. And then uh, please take note, follow us on Binod Hi-Fi for Live Ed Episode 3. Live Ed Episode 3 is for educators. Uh, if you want like a guide to help you transition towards a digital, uh, digital classroom. So in our first episode, we had Storyfy. Second episode, we had Audify, which is using uh, audio-based platforms, making podcasts, etc. Our third episode will be very exciting, but uh, that's a surprise. We'll post it online. So thank you again, everyone. We'll see you again in the next uh, engaged talk. Stay engaged. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Salamat, Carlo.